Hey everyone, welcome to the next part on anti-derivative rules, indefinite and definite integrals. We're going to focus on success criteria B, but this time really hone in on the rules of trigonometric functions. All right, so before we talk about the anti-derivative rules, let's first talk about the derivative rules. So why don't you pause and try uh, remembering what the derivatives of each of these trig uh, functions are. All right, so check your paper with this, um, the solutions here. All right, so now here are six um, trig functions here. Uh, I'd like you to try finding the antiderivative or the indefinite integral of each one of these. So when you're doing it, try to cover the derivative rules with a piece of paper, just so you can try doing this from memory um, without the solutions. All right, so pause and try. All right, so here are the solutions. The antiderivative of cosine is sine because I know the derivative of sine is cosine, so plus c. Okay, so the next one is cosine because I know the derivative of cosine is sine, but I know the derivative of cosine gives me a negative sine, right? So for me to get a positive sine, I need to make this a negative cosine x because if I take the derivative of negative cosine x, That'll give me sine of x. Okay, next one, secant squared. That's just tangent. Secant x tangent x is secant x. Cosecant x cotangent x is, it's kind of like cosecant x, but remember here, when we take the derivative of a cosecant, we get a negative sign, right? So we need to make sure that we need a negative in front of the cosecant. Um, because uh, then if I take the derivative of a negative cosecant, I'll end up with the positive cosecant cotangent. And finally, uh, we got cosecant squared. That's from the cotangent x. But again, cotangent x gives us a negative sign, so I need to make sure that this is negative. And then plus c. All right, so now that we have all the rules for the trigonometric functions, why don't you pause and try these two def indefinite integrals? All right, here's the first one, two cosine x. The antiderivative of that is a sine of x, but there's a constant two, so I'll put a two. Plus, and this is a trick question here, pi squared seems like it should be one third, one third pi cubed. But remember, pi, actually all of pi squared is a constant. So it's going to be pi squared times x. Because if you think about it, when you take the derivative of pi squared x, you just end up with pi squared. OK, finally, the last one, we have a negative 1 half sine x. I know that to get sine of x, I need a negative cosine x, right? So it's, en it's going to end up as positive 1 half cosine x. Because if you take the derivative of 1 half cosine x, you'll end up with a negative one-half sine x, okay? And then plus c. So there we go, that's rn. All right, next problem, the antiderivative of three secant x tangent x plus secant squared x minus one, half, one over x squared dx. Before I do the problem, what I'll do is rewrite um, this because the part after the trig, I got a one over x squared. I wanna make that, um, actually just x to the negative two power, dx. Okay, so let's remember my rules. I know secant, what gives me secant x tangent x? Uh, that'll just be secant x. So it's, it'll be three secant x plus, and then what gives me secant squared x? That'll be tangent of x. And then to do my rules, it's gonna be minus something x to the negative one power and then I'm going to divide by one, so it'll be look, it'll look like that. All right. So now that we know the antiderivative rules for trigonometric functions, we are able to evaluate definite or indefinite integrals of trig functions.